Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be testing out probably one of the most full coverage foundations ever out there and it is this Dermacol foundation right here. This is in the shade 218 which I feel like is going to be a little bit light for me. I did test it out on my face the other day and it kind of matches but I feel like overall it's going to be a little bit light so I will need to bronze my face just so that it matches the rest of me but this is a really full coverage foundation that a lot of you guys have been asking me to test out and review so that's what I'm going to do today. I got mine from Amazon for around £8 but I know there are some websites that you can also get this from which I'll leave like a list of all of them in the info box below. I actually have the Dermacol website in front of me and I'm going to read you out some of the benefits and claims that it makes. It is a waterproof, hypoallergenic for all skin types, SPF 30, preservative free, extreme full coverage foundation. So Lots of benefits going on there. It also says that the clinically tested Extreme Covering Makeup Cover was created as one of the first of its kind in Europe and one of the first in the world. The license for this foundation was eventually sold to Hollywood. It contains 50% pigment, which makes it a weapon against skin imperfections. Dermacol Makeup Cover provides the perfect coverage even in thin layers and is the perfect color corrector for dark under eye, unpleasant spots and skin blemishes. It completely covers acne, a loss of pigmentation, post surgical bruising, tattoos, etc. It may be used on the entire face or body or for color correction, darkening or lightening the skin tones and ensuring ideal balance. It's widely used as a professional makeup for photo, film shoots, modeling and for festive occasions. So this bad boy has 50% pigments in here. So I'm guessing I will need a very, very, very small amount for my face. So you only get 30 grams of product in here, but for the price, I mean, it doesn't seem too bad. And I'm assuming you'll need to use the tiny Tiniest, tiniest amount. So now that we have all of that out of the way, I am going to prep my skin so that we can test this bad boy out. I'm just putting some moisturizer on my face. I'm using the Hydra Genius by L'Oreal because I feel like my skin will need to be nice and hydrated underneath this, especially because it's such a full coverage foundation. I did actually test some out on the back of my hand and the tiniest dot covered so much of my hand so I'm really excited to try this out. I am going to be testing this for a few hours because I've got some errands to run today so I'll be back at the end of this video um, to do a bit of a check-in with you guys. I'm really excited to see how this holds up. Because this is so full coverage and I want to make sure my skin is nice and hydrated, the primer that I'm going to use is the Too Faced Hangover RX Primer or Hangover R primer or hangover primer. I don't know what to call this, but I'm just gonna put this on because this has got coconut water in it, so it's gonna keep my skin nice and hydrated as well. Although my skin doesn't have that many marks on it, it'll be interesting to see just how much it covers and how long this lasts. So to test this foundation, I'm gonna do half of my face with a buffing brush. This is the optical blurring brush from Urban Decay and then I'm going to be doing half my face with my trusty beauty blender. Now that my skin is nice and prepped I am gonna give this a go. So this is in the shade 218. I did try this out earlier and I had to kind of like pop the film at the top and I'm just gonna take a really small amount, just that much, on the back of my hand. I think I'm just gonna get like a dot of this or maybe like two dots of it and just put it on my cheeks and one on my forehead and one kind of near my chin. Whoa, that is pigmentation for sure. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and start buffing this into the skin. It says you can use thin layers. Wow, that is full coverage. I will do close up so you guys can see exactly what it looks like on the skin. But even though that's a really thin layer, that's covered really, really nicely. I feel like I might need a little bit more product, especially like around my nose, because I feel like I've got some redness showing through. So I'm just gonna take a dot of that, and I know that's gonna be way too much. So I'm just gonna double up some of the coverage on this side of the face. And it's actually blending really nicely, considering it's such a full coverage foundation. It's not feeling or looking cakey on the skin, which I like. And I did have a bit of a red mark right there on my cheek and it's covered that up so well, almost to the point where I don't even need to like color correct. That's actually not a really bad color match either. Hmm. 
So as you can see, I've got it on half of my face and it's covered really nicely. It doesn't look too like cakey on my skin. Apart from on my nose, it does look a little bit like it's bunching up. But I haven't really exfoliated my skin in the past few days, so that could be a reason why. But now that we have this side done, I'm going to go ahead and do this side using my damp beauty blender. And I think I'm just going to do the same. I'm just going to kind of dot it around on my face. I'm going to do some extra dots because I feel like I went in with extra coverage. So it should be okay adding some extra ones on my face. Now that I'm all dotted up, I'm just going to go ahead and start blending that into the skin. And you guys know how much I love the finish of a beauty blender. So it'll be interesting to see what the two sides look like or whether they look the same. I feel like this side looks like there's a bit more coverage than this side. But then again, I did put some extra dots on this side. So maybe I shouldn't have done that, but it's okay. I feel like this side definitely has a bit more coverage. And I also feel like this side is slightly lighter than this side as well. I'm just going to go over with the brush because I kind of prefer the finish that it gives with one of these buffing brushes rather than a beauty blender. I can't actually believe I'm saying that because I love my beauty blender so much, but I actually prefer it because it makes it look a little bit more natural. I do actually get a lot of questions as to why I don't put foundation on my eyelids. And that's because every single time I put foundation on my eyelids, it creases and I just hate that. Like I hate going on with my day and then having like a line of foundation on my eyelids. So I always leave it um, like this because then it kind of looks like I'm wearing eyeshadow when I'm not really. I'm gonna show you guys a close up of my skin. It does look like there's quite a bit of coverage going on, but that's what you've got to expect with a 50% pigment foundation. But I mean, it looks really nice so far. Now that I do have my base on, I'm just gonna go and finish the rest of my makeup and then I'll be right back. So I've just quickly put the rest of my face on. I haven't really powdered anywhere apart from under my eyes and slightly on my T-zone because I want to see how well this kind of lasts on my skin. If you're wondering what lip colour I'm wearing, it's a mixture of a Bel Air by Ofra and this Too Faced lip gloss called Peach Please. It's been a long time since I've worn a lip gloss, but I'm really liking the mixture of a liquid lipstick with a lip gloss on top because it makes it feel really nice and like bouncy and comfortable to wear. It's almost 10 o'clock here in the UK, so I'm gonna be testing this foundation out for the next five or six hours. I think I'm gonna be taking it off around 5 p.m. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to see how this holds up. Before I go, I will include some close-ups of the foundation because currently I'm really liking the way that it's sitting on my skin. It definitely looks full coverage around like this area of my mouth. But I'm not mad at that because of the price point and the fact that it is like super, super, super full coverage foundation. When I wiped the blob of foundation off my hand, I did find that it was waterproof because it wasn't like budging when I was trying to like wipe it off. And I definitely had to use soap. So I feel like the claims of it being waterproof is definitely a little bit true. Um, but I'm not gonna be putting my face in water, but it is gonna be very, very hot today here in the UK. So it'll be interesting to see how well that waterproof kind of aspect lasts on my skin. I will also include a picture of what my skin looks like in flash photography with this foundation because I always like seeing what my skin looks like in pictures because it's always a nice indication of how good your makeup looks. <laughs> I'm not going to touch up my skin throughout the day because I really want to see like how it lasts without any extra help. That's all from me for now and with the power of editing you'll be able to see my future self and my thoughts on this foundation after a good six or seven hours of wearing it. I'm back six and a half-ish hours later. It is almost 4.30 in the afternoon. So I've had this foundation on for quite a while and considering it's quite hot today and I took a bit of a 15 minute nap, this foundation has held up quite well. Considering it was quite warm today, my foundation has lasted pretty well apart from like my nose area. I feel like on my nose it's broken up quite a bit and I had a subway a little while ago and I got some lipstick on my chin and when I went to wipe it off. It kind of wiped all of the foundation off my chin. But other than that, it's kind of stayed put everywhere else. The coverage is still there apart from obviously like my nose area. That's kind of like my problem area when it comes to foundations in general. But it has kind of disappeared quite a bit. A little bit more so than usual. But for about six hours wear, it's not too bad. Especially for the price and the coverage you're getting in this. Technically, you could mix this in with one of your favorite foundations to really amp up the coverage, which I think would work quite 
quite well especially if you've got like a specific foundation that you like the longevity of or the finish of this you could definitely use on top of that to like mix into your foundation to like build up that coverage one thing I do have to say is when I was putting my bronzer and blusher and highlight on it actually went on so smoothly it wasn't patchy it didn't tug on the skin and it just kind of melted into the rest of my foundation really really well and I thought that was really quite impressive especially because I didn't set the other areas of my face and also right now like my bronzer or anything isn't looking patchy at all it actually looks like pretty fresh and pretty good. I would definitely recommend this foundation for someone who has pretty normal skin. For oily skin, I wouldn't really recommend it because it has broken up quite a bit on my nose area. But like I said, you can use this more as a product to kind of amp up the coverage in your like favorite foundation, for example. I did forget to mention in the earlier part of this video that this comes in around 13 shades, which is quite a lot, but there aren't very many kind of deeper skin tones, which kind of sucks. But you never know, they could actually end up adding more shade ranges to this. I think my overall thoughts will have to be I like this foundation but it hasn't like blown me away. Obviously there is like a ton of coverage in this. It kind of reminds me of the Kevin O'Kwan Sensual Skin Enhancer because of the coverage factor for it but I feel like there's not anything in this that's going to make me want to wear it all the time. I feel like there really isn't anything in this foundation that's going to make me want to use this over anything else. Obviously the price point is amazing, like I think seven, eight pounds for a full, full, full coverage foundation is fab, but I feel like because it's broken up so much around my nose area, it kind of puts me off wanting to use it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed me reviewing this 50% pigment foundation. Please let me know if there are any other products that you would like me to test out in the comments below. And whilst you're down there, please don't forget to subscribe and hit that thumbs up button. And yeah, I guess that is all for now. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye!